take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Have you ever thought about how breathing works? Today, we'll be focusing on how the lungs work using two different models to explain it. Hello, my name's Emily Tugwell and I'm a final year medical student here at the ANU. Your respiratory system is the system in your body that enables you to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. It's made of your nose, your mouth, your trachea, which is the windpipe that connects your mouth to your lungs. Your lungs, you've got a left lung and a right lung. It also involves some really important muscles like your diaphragm and intercostal muscles, which sit between your ribs. Today, we'll be making two models. The first model will be a more intuitive model in the way that we tend to think about lungs. And the second model will show how your diaphragm has a really important role in the way that you breathe. So to make our first model, we've got a box, picture of the lungs, two balloons, some tubing, some tape, some scissors, some glue, some blue tack, a Y connect and a syringe. To get started, we're just gonna first glue the lung pitcher onto the box. And we're also going to glue the box lid onto the box here as well. We'll leave that there for a second to dry and we'll get everything set up. So taking your Y connect, you're going to want to attach a balloon to each side. Now the tricky part with this is you need it to be very well sealed. So I'm gonna take some tape and cut off sections of tape that I'll use to wrap around. So I found that it works best if you pinch the balloon a little and tuck it over itself so you're making a really good seal. Then using the tape, I'm gonna go around and make sure that there's no air getting through and the balloon is really well attached. We're now gonna do that with the other side as well. So putting the balloon on, give it a little pinch and pull it over. At this bit, you can always test it and make sure that the balloons are filling up nicely. Now what we're going to do, is gonna take our bit of uh, pipe, place it into the Y tubing and make sure that that as well is stuck into place. I'm going to use a bit of blue tack so that it seals very well. Using your scissors, make a hole in the box like this. We're now also going to use a little bit of super glue. Put some super glue onto the Y connect here. And this is going to be attached to your lungs. So you can see here, we've now made a left lung and a right lung. If you take your Y pipe, thread it over the back, underneath the box, and then through the hole that you've made, just pull it slightly. Last steps, you can insert the nozzle of your syringe, just making sure you fill it up with a little bit of air beforehand. And then we can have our lung model. So this is the way that we often intuitively think about lungs. We think that as we inhale, the balloons expand, and as we exhale, they shrink down. Which is true, but it's a little bit of a um, simplistic model and it doesn't show the whole picture. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a second model to elaborate a little bit on some of these scientific concepts. The second model that we're going to be making shows us the role of the diaphragm in breathing. So to get started, you need a water bottle or any recycled container that you can cut up, a piece of pipe, some blue tack, two balloons, um, some small rubber bands if you can find them, and some tape. First things first, using your scissors, um, be careful about this because it can be a little bit tricky. So using your scissors, you cut all the way through the bottle. And then this bit can just go in the recycling. So this is going to act as your thoracic cavity, your chest. Um, this is sort of acting like the rib cage um, and all of the muscles that act um, around your lungs, keeping them very safe. Now we're going to unscrew this lid, put that to the side, we'll need that later. 
so get your balloon and cut off the neck of this balloon like this and that can just go in the bin. I find it's helpful to stretch the balloon a little bit um, to make it a little less rigid. Uh, and this is going to act as your diaphragm, which sits below your lungs. It's a muscle and it's very important in the work of breathing. We're going to stretch your diaphragm all the way across the bit of your bottle that you've cut off like that. Using some tape, secure your diaphragm in place. And now just to test it, you want to make sure that you can pull on that diaphragm to simulate the contraction and relaxation of the muscle. Now putting that to the side, what we're going to do here is we're going to make a hole in the lid of this bottle. So just pressing down, I find it's easiest and safest if you keep the lid on the table and just rotate and you should be able to make a hole in the lid with that. There we go. Perfect. So you thread that pipe all the way through. Now on this end, this is going to simulate your lungs. So put the balloon on the very end of the, of the pipe and using some small hair ties or rubber bands, um, you want to secure this very tightly by wrapping it around so that it connects nicely. Now you can pull that all the way up so it's sitting flush with the cap. What we're going to do, we're nearly there, thread this balloon inside your rib cage, which is this bottle that we've made, and we're gonna be able to pull on this diaphragm to simulate the air movement. So, when you breathe in, your brain sends a signal to your diaphragm, this muscle at the very bottom, to tell it to contract, which moves everything down. As it does that, there is a greater space left. As it's moved down, there's more space left. There's something called Boyle's Law, which is that when there is an increased volume, there's a decreased pressure, or if there's a decreased volume, there's an increased pressure. So in this case, as we pull the diaphragm down, there'll be more volume, which means there's less pressure. Now, air is like most humans I know, and it likes to go to somewhere where there's less pressure. I don't like being under pressure, and I'll try and avoid it if I can. Air does the same thing. So air goes from a place where there's relatively more pressure, just this outside environment, into somewhere where there's less pressure if it can. In this case, I'm going to pull down on the diaphragm, and as I do, the balloon is going to inflate, which simulates breathing in. As I relax it, the balloon will deflate. So inflate, deflate. Inflate, deflate. As the diaphragm is working, it's changing the pressure of the intrathoracic cavity, the space caused by your rib cage and your lungs. It's changing the pressure in that space, meaning that the lungs inflate because of that pressure and you breathe in and then the lungs deflate as the diaphragm relaxes. The diaphragm isn't the only muscle that does this. The diaphragm does about 75% of the work and other muscles, your intercostal muscles, which sit between your ribs, do about 25% of the work. You might notice when you make this, as you pull on the diaphragm, you can sometimes even hear the air getting sucked through the tube all the way in. And as you release, you can hear the air coming out. If your model isn't working, do try making sure that it's very nice and tight and that there's, it's well sealed the whole way around um, because that obviously, if, it's, if there's any leaks, that's going to change the pressure inside to make it exactly the same as the pressure outside the balloon. So today we've seen two models of the lungs. We've seen a model that shows the way that we intuitively think about lungs in terms of inflating and deflating as we breathe in and breathe out. And we've also seen a model that shows us the way that the pressure of inside our intrathoracic cavity, inside our chest wall, is shaped by the movement of the muscle of our diaphragm to enable us to breathe in. I hope you found that interesting um, and good luck trying to make your own lungs.